Yo guys, welcome back to another PDCGO Forbidden Light video, and today guys, we're taking a look at Buzzwool Greninja, aka the new Landy Bats, the new Landers Crobat deck. Sort of. This is one of, probably not the worst deck ever, but it's certainly lacking in its potential, I feel like, because this deck has a lot of issues. A lot of issues. Um, but we're going to try it out and see if we can have some fun with it today, and see if it's a decent rogue at all. And uh, we'll see how this deck pairs. Um, but anyways, guys, once again, guys, thank you guys for all the support on the recent Forbidden Light videos. All the likes, all the comments, all love. Keeps me wanting to upload every day, right? So, anyways, let's take a look at the list today. Now, I know a lot of you guys are a little tired of Buzzwool. Buzzwool is so popular right now. A lot of people hate it. I understand that. This is just a fun deck. It's, this deck is honestly not to be even taken seriously. I was even considering making this a crazy combo deck because it just feels... Like it should be. Um, now, Landers Crobat was a deck that was pretty good back in the days, but this was back when Night March was relevant. Now it's not so relevant. Obviously, Night March is no longer standard, and we have these big 200 plus HP attackers that are dominating the format. Crobat used to be good back in the days for multiple reasons, though. Not only was it a non GX Pokemon, it also could attack. Now, one of the issues with Greninja, Greninja cannot really attack in this deck, unless we want to play Rainbow Energies and DCEs, which this build of the deck would be so clunky that it wouldn't even be worth running. That would just be the clunkiest thing on the planet. This version of the deck is not as good, per se, right? You don't have access to Skill Dive, you're not a non-GX Pokemon. Greninja doesn't even have a free retreat cost, which makes almost no sense, considering Greninja with Shadow Stitching does. So... The Landy Bats is definitely not 100% back, but it technically counts as the new Landy Bats, because Greninja and Frogadier and Buzzwool all are like the new Landers Crobat engine. So the idea is, is we pick them off with Jet Punch, and then we go in with Shuriken Flurries and with Gale Shurikens. Another issue this deck does suffer, though, there's no AZ in the format. If AZ was in the format, this deck would maybe be a bit better, because there's theoretically no way to get Greninja off of the bench unless you use Ace Rolla, which we are going to try and take advantage of. So, this is one of the issues with this deck. You don't have you don't have AZ, so we kind of have to use Ace Rolla as a way to retrieve our Greninjas. We don't play any copies of DCs or Rainbow Energies to attack our Greninja, so this is just a weird deck all around. So I've kind of built this deck more or less around like a devolution aggressive build, if that makes any sense. We are going to be playing Espeon in this list just for Miraculous Shine. With all the Jet Punches and Greninjas we can do, we get to add some damage on the board, and then Miraculous Shine can come in and de-evolve stuff. This helps our matchups a little bit, you know, there are still some relevant evolutions. Zorua, which I mean, we already beat Zorua, we get my point right, Zorua, Rolks, Wimpod still may be seen play other Greninja decks, so... Miraculous Shine is still pretty useful in this list. Um, and once we kind of take early knock of the Jet Punch, we can start using the Beast String combo and go from there. And uh, that's the idea. So it's just a weird Buzzwool deck. It, it all together is. So we'll take a look at the other Pokemon. We got our three Frokies, our three Frogadiers, our three Greninjas. Last night I ended up pulling a Rainbow Rare Greninja. I was just grinding some tourneys. You get 400 coins for winning. So I was able to pull a Full Art Greninja. And, uh, well, no, I pulled a Secret Rare, but I already did pull a Full Art Lock one. So it's a pretty nice pull, and it got me excited to want to play another Greninja deck. So there you go. Um, we got Diancy just to do 20 more damage. Um, the math is relevant with Diancy's Jet Punch. Uh, we do play one Memories of Dawn Mew. This is mainly here as a counter to Buzzwool. You know, we can copy Jet Punch. We can copy Baby Buzzwool, which is one of the most important parts about this Mew. We got two Leleys with Wonder Tag. We need some draw support in this deck, so we are going to be playing a 1 1 Octillery line since we play Brooklyn Hill. And those are all the Pokemon in this list. It's a very clunky deck for Pokemon, especially because you don't even attack with Greninja. But there you go. Um, it's how it is. Almost makes me wish I could play something like a Mill Tank in here, but unfortunately we do not have Mill Tank. I think a Mill Tank was still legal. It'd be a nice one of because again, they're going to attacking. It's just weird. Um, so we go to the items. We do play two B strings, just two. It's not a B string heavy deck, but we are still going to play B string. It's so good, Buzzle. Well, one Field Blower, so we can get our abilities back. One Super Rod to get our Pokemon and our energies back. We got four Ultra Balls to search for our Pokemon. We do play three copies of Brooklet Hill. Great Stadium card. It lets you grab Froakie, Remoraid, or our Buzzles, or Diancy. Two Ace Rolla. We can combo this if we're just jet punching away. Or we can use this with Greninja if 
you know, it takes damage somehow, we can ace roll the Greninja back, and then we have access to Greninja again. One Bridget, turn one Bridget is great with this list. Four Cynthia's for draw support. I don't really like playing heavy Sycamores, that's actually why I play two Sycamores, four Cynthia's, and two N's. So I've cut down on the draw supporter line. We got three copies of Guzma to bring stuff up to knock out. We got our two Sycamore, two N's. I kind of want to play three N's to be honest with you. Or maybe even just take out Sycamore altogether. Three choice bands, so we can do more damage. Two float stones for free retreat. Three strong energies, one beast energy, and six basic fighting energies. Yes, this is my Greninja GX Buzzwell list. It's a very odd deck, but it's going to be an interesting deck to try out nonetheless. So we'll see if we can get some fun with this deck on PCGO. So see you guys in a minute with some matches with this deck. And uh, this is going to be a bit of a doozy, but uh, we're going to see if we can get some matches with it and have some fun. Alright guys, let's go find some games with our new Landy Bat deck. Let's see if we can get some fun. We're probably going to get those chests too, so maybe we can get some chests opened up for this video. Alright, so first game we are playing against Pika P. I I know that name from somewhere. I don't- he looks so familiar. I don't know if it's from trades or just me playing. But I feel like I know this guy. But don't know. Hopefully he is not playing a... Psychic deck, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. This is the problem with this list. Is like, there's no good psychic counter. This is why, like, attacking with Greninja would be great, but you can't attack with Greninja. So, I don't know. My opponent is taking a while. There we go. We do win the coin flip, which is nice. I think he's going to be playing the Ganadel Metals, which is a little scary. We're going to open up with Froki and a bit of a weird hand. Not very good, to be honest with you. I think these hands have seen better days. Because we have to get rid of quite a few good cards, like Choice Band and Field Blower, maybe. He is playing Garboder Zoar. That is just lovely. Uh, my favorite deck. No, I'm kidding. I don't I don't like playing against Garboder Zoar. This is a very annoying deck, but uh, we'll, we'll try and beat it out. We have to get rid of items here, which I really don't want to do. I think I just sent the other. There's too many good cards. I could get rid of the Strong Energy, but... That hand is just too good, too good of a hand. I don't want to lose anything. Once again, we kind of have to get rid of some cards. Probably, we'll just do this for a buzzle. Man, I was hoping we could get a Bridget there, but it's whatever. Um, He's playing Kartana, so I think I just do this. I'll pass for now, let Froki chill in the active. Next turn, we can probably knock out that active Trubbish. Zoark we can definitely beat though, it is one of our better matchups, but Garboder is going to make this matchup a pain in the butt, because Garboder, as you know, can hit Garboder for, for Buzzle for Weakness. We gotta be careful how many items we play, so far we've only played one. Parallel City, that's fine, we still have a lot of options. I would have saved that, and there we go, that's why. I think he's got more though, so I gotta be careful. Looks like Octillery is prize, so I think I'll just grab a second Froki. Parallel City is going to be one of the most annoying things that I have to deal with here. Can't wait for that card to rotate. But, let's see what we get. We get Strong Energy. No Frogadier, so we can't knock out this Trubbish, which is really sad. So I think we'll just hit this Zorua. Oh no, we do. What am I saying? Beast Energy Dianasi. My math was completely off there. Shows how uh, smart I am. Kappa. 1000 IQ confirmed. I'm just kidding. Um, we'll hit the uh, Zorua. This way we can potentially knock out a Zork in one hit because it have got 100 HP remaining. Though I probably should start picking off Trubbish, but I think it's fine just to soften up these Zoruas here. We are going to see a Zor come down, but again, we can knock it out here. Probably. We'll see what my opponent can do this turn. A Burst Eye, he's got the Balloons too. Also, very annoying cards to see are Bursting Balloons. Hopefully this Beast Energy stays on my Buzzle for a few turns. We really need that extra 30 damage for these Zoarks. Hoping no Kartana comes down. He's going to end me to 5, which I'm fine with. I don't know. I probably would have guzma there, and I probably would have taken out another Trubbish. Just get rid of the Trubbishes. I think that would have been my game plan. So hopefully we can pull it off this turn. We don't. We do get a Field Blower, though, which is good, so we can get rid of that pesky Bursting Balloon. Does he get a DCE, though, is the question. We're probably going to have to go Lele here, too. Buzzle's going to take some damage. We could Ace Rolla. We do have that Ace Rolla loop going when Zoar can't one-shot me. So we have that going for us. There's an Ultra Ball. I think he's going to grab Kartana here. 
or another Zoroark. A Zoroark. 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 I can't say his name, but he's gonna grab a Kartana. He got rid of an Ace Rolla, and uh, yep, there it is. I told you he had it. I knew it. Oh, rip the Beast Energy. And he hit DC. Holy cow, what a turn. Oh my gosh, man. I, I hate playing against the work guard. Anyways, what do we draw? Oh. Not good. Alright, we're gonna have to Lele here. Um, we'll put Lele down. We'll probably have to do... Like, I could Guzma and sacrifice my boy, but that's not worth it. I think I gotta go Sycamore. It's a bit of a rip, but it is what it is. More items I have to play, which is not good. We could probably just attach and Sycamore. I don't really care if I don't put Strong Energy on. Okay, there's a Beast Ring, which is good for next turn. So we can grab Buzzle GX, though I should probably put Baby Buzzle down. We can do that next turn, though, so it's fine. We have Super Rod also, which is really good. So we can Jet Punch. Probably hit the other Zoark, I think. Just keep putting 30 damage on the board. I'm hoping he doesn't ace Rolla, but we'll see. Gar Buzzwool is going to get knocked out here, unfortunately, but we get to activate Beast Ring, and that's good. Though, I am worried about a Parallel City coming down. We'd have to sacrifice a Froki and a Greninja, so that's going to be kind of bad. I don't know if he plays any more than two Parallel Cities. We'll see, I guess. So now he's got three Zoarks in play, but again, we activate Beast String, which is good. I'm going to have to knock him out with Absorption, because I need to save Baby Buzzwool for, like, maybe Garboder even. There's more items we have to play, though. It's not good. There's Garbo... Oh, Garbo Toxin. Okay. I think he's going to try and balloon him. Yep, that's fine. I don't really mind not using abilities. I have no supporters, no access. Really, not even Frogadier matters at this point either. So he's gonna knock me out, unfortunately, but we get to activate some pretty big combos here, which is beautiful. So we can bring out Froki. The only problem is, okay, there's no Tarbish is down, so I don't have to worry about too much. So we'll Brooklyn Hill for Baby Buzz. We will have to knock him out with Absorption, but that's fine. We'll B String. Oh, last two energies in the deck. Well, fight, basic fight anything, anyway. So we have, I could do Super Rod, but I think we'll hold that for now. I could Ultra Ball, but we'll hold it. I think we just hold everything in this hand. And we just Absorption this Solar Arc. I could, wait, could I have Knuckle Impacted him? Or not, no, Jet Punch, whatever. We'll, we'll do that anyways, it's fine. I don't think I would knock him out. There's Espeon, there's Choice Band. Espeon's pretty useful in this matchup too, I guess. We can take out two Zoarks, so that's pretty good. So we might be able to use Espeon here. We're in a pretty good spot right now, I think. There's no Trubbishes down, which... Are, there was a Trubbish down. One, two, three. We, yeah, a Choice Band Garboder would threaten us quite a bit. Men might even be playing Choice Band, though. The only thing that's bothersome is Bursting Balloon. Bursting Balloon's gonna be a bit of an issue. That 60 damage is kind of relevant. So we have to watch out for that. Really wish I had Guzma in my hand. We still haven't played that many supporters, so... The odds of us drawing into something are pretty decent, I think. He's gonna get rid of a choice ban. We gotta watch out for Puzzle of Time. If even I don't even know if this deck has room for Puzzle of Time. There's so many items. We got already got the bursting balloons, choice ban, float stone. You probably play. Gotta make room for the garbs. I'm hoping there's no puzzle in this deck. I am still a little scared of a parallel city though. So I really don't want to lose a Froki here because Greninja definitely could help us. Greninja could be an MVP in this match, but at this point, it's looking pretty likely that we have game. Like, even one thing I could do is, if we just, if we can get a Guzma, I can just Sledgehammer, knock out Garboder or Zoark, which I want to do. And, well, can we knock What? Okay, so we're doing 120, 150, 170. If we want, we can take out Kartana or Lele. Oh, he does play Puzzle. That's dirty. He's going to get back to trouble. Okay. We are in desperate need of a... Thing to get that knocked out. He's actually gonna bring it up. In before Wally. Kappa. Alright, let's see. Shoot, I suck at that a little annoying. But we do knock him out here, which is fine. We 
No Guzmas, though. That's kind of annoying. We'll get rid of Remoraid. And... I mean... I'm probably gonna go with Sycamore. Dang, dude. Where's Ace Rollo when we need it? Ace Rollo would be great right now. You can still hit a Flow, right? Okay, we'll get rid of a... We'll get rid of Ultra Ball and Remoraid here. Do we have our other Flow? Yeah, we do. We still have our other Beast Ring. So that's good. So grab a Frogadier. This means we can just Jet Punch him, which is awesome for me. Um, we get KO'd by Zoark, which is pretty annoying. Um, we really need to get Floatstone here. Where do we put this? Where do we put this? I'll put on Lele, I guess. Sure. I could put on the active. I could always retreat. That is an option. But if we can get flow, we can keep the two energies. We didn't get it. Okay, that's that's a bit of a rip in the chat. All right, we will have to retreat then. I don't want to do that. We didn't even get a beast ring. But we knock him out with baby Buzzwool. We can still use Buzzwool Flader. We'll put down Frogadier and we'll... Makes me regret hitting this for 20, but it's fine. We'll hit this guy for 20. We'll soften up that. And we will Sledgehammer knock out this Trubbish. Now I don't have to worry about Garb at the moment. And we'll see what our prize is. Guzma's good. I don't think that's quite game yet, though. Maybe, I don't know. Sledgehammer is still not going to be used anymore, but it's fine. We kind of use Buzzwell mainly to take out Garb, which is kind of what I wanted to use it for in this situation. No matchup, but I think we can win next turn as long as we don't see... I mean, I think he's going to Guzma my Buzzwell here, which is going to be annoying. We used our rod. Oh, shoot. Don't disconnect me. Come on. Don't do this today, game. I don't want... This is a really good match. Don't do it. All right. Let's see what he does. I think he is going to take a knockout this turn, though, on something. But if not, we could win the game. Greninja, strong energy. It makes me wish I did put the choice band on the buzzword. Oh, gosh. Drubbish. This could mean disaster if my opponent does take two prizes this turn. He's used two of his Guzmas, or no, one so far. When he just got rid of a Guzma. Which means he's planning on probably Guzma. But then why would he get rid of that Guzma? Unless he's planning on doing puzzles. I don't know. It's fine though. But no, he had it. Rip, 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 rip. That is bad. Right. We can bring out a fresh Buzzwool. Or we can take a baby Buzzwool. We've played too many items. Played too many items. Any balloon, dude. Okay, hold on. I need to just do the math here. So, can we take out this Zoark this turn? Baby Buzzwool is doing 30. 60, so we're doing 120. With the strong energy, we are doing... Okay, so 50 would be 100, 130. Okay, we do have game here. We can just baby Buzzle with the Greninja. Should knock out this Zoark, I think, on the bench. Oh, even if it's... Even my math is wrong. I'm still good to use baby Buzzle. And I'm actually knocking a bench of Buzzle just in case... Just in case... He has game. If for some reason my math is wrong and he does knock us out, we don't have game. There you go. But okay, we, I'm pretty sure we got game. There we go. Boom! Beating Zoar. Greninja actually came in handy this match. I'm impressed. We actually used Greninja to win us the game almost, basically. Without Greninja, I don't know. But that was great. Showed off the Greninjas and Frogs pretty nicely. Pretty interesting match. My opponent came really close to winning. It's because of the. I really think it's just because of the fact that. Trubbish is doing so much damage, it can get really, really scary. But, we came out on top, so that was a really nice match. Not gonna lie. Pretty good game. Good game to my opponent. I actually, and I know him too, so there you go. GG to you. And alright, looks like we're up against another Zoark deck. Don't mind me, I am very, very pleased to play against Zoark twice in a row. So we'll flip the coin, hopefully we can win it. Because then we can get... Early, early Zoro went off here, so that's fine. We go second, we can still take him out. It's just he gets to go and evolve second. So, we do have a pretty good starting hand. We do have Turn 1 Bridget for once. We have a Beast Energy in our hand. Which makes this a very Beast of a hand. And I am liking this deck a little bit. That game was pretty intense. I was glad how that game turned out. The only thing that's going to be problematic, though, is Lycanroc GX. That's going to be the biggest hurdle. 
but potentially we can get it in one shot range thanks to Knuckle Impact and Greninjas and Frogadiers. So we have a lot of options here. Where's my phone? I'm trying to look at my phone. Hold on. Okay, but yeah, we have a lot of options. He's going to bridge it, so no end, which is fine. And we can take a nice knockout on Zoro. We can soften up the uh, Rock Cliff. I am worried, though, that he might get a turn two knockout with Dangerous Rogue. We have to watch out for that. Hopefully that doesn't happen. If he builds this up, that's bad, and then I might not bridge it. But I kind of have to. I really hope no energy goes on that Rockruff this turn. Okay, good. We're, we're golden. We can, we can bridge it in peace. Bridge is prized! No! Oh, that's bad. Rip the dream. Bridget, Bridget is prized. <sighs> that really sucks. Alright, we're gonna Ultra Ball away. Ace Rolla and an energy. Gonna grab Remoraid. Dang, that really sucks. Alright, whatever. We'll still knock him out. We, we didn't really need the Diancy right away. And no fro no Froakies either. That kinda sucks. I can put Baby Buzzle down. Kinda wanna do that. Or I'm gonna wait to play, and I think I'll wait to play it. So we can do Jet Punch, and we'll obviously bring out the undamaged Zorua. So we'll probably just hit Rock Rough and try and soften that thing up to get KO. If we had Greninja's down, even better. All right, let's see what we get. Choice Band's pretty good. I'm probably gonna have to Ace Roll in my Buzzle because he's gonna swing me for with Zoark. So let's see what my opponent does. But most likely we have to ace roller here unless he ends me. Does suck Bridget was prized. That would have been a really good, nice Bridget turn one, but it is what it is. Gotta deal with it. I really wish we had Brooklyn Hill right now, too. That's also something that uh, would be nice. We see an Ultra Ball. Which means my opponent is probably going for Zoark. Alright, so let's see. So he's going to get rid of E-Hammer. That's a good discard to see, even though he gets Puzzle, which means he can get it back in a point. But it's fine. And he's grabbing a Mewtwo. Okay, he's playing Mewtwo. So I forgot about Mewtwo. That's going to make things tough. We do have Baby Mew, though. Baby Mew is in our deck, so that's good. He's going to end me. That's not what I was hoping for. As long as he whiffs... So if, if he whiffs, uh, yeah, I'm hoping he whiffs here. If he can whiff the DC Zoark, I will be happy. And it is not a good hand. He actually just concedes the match, which I'm fine with. I mean, that's a good matchup for us, but I'm fine with him conceding. And uh, we'll move on for another game. We get 50 coins. And next win, we might be able to get those chests. All right, guys, let's go find another game with our deck. I didn't find a match. It was against a Psychic deck. It was against Malamar. Not worth watching because I kind of got wrecked because... I didn't, I wasn't drawing very well, so it wasn't very interesting to watch. Kind of just got steamrolled, so I just gave up. But we'll find another game. And alright, looks like we're up against a Metal Box deck, potentially. I think he also could be playing Naganadel. Kind of scary. The Psychic types right now are just too good. Playing Buzzle is such a risk, and we don't even win the coin flip. So that kind of sucks. No turn 2 Frogadiers for us. We do start with Buzzle, which is good. We do have turn 1 Lele, which is also important. So we'll see what we can get here off of this hand. We just gotta see what my opponent starts with himself. So he starts with Lele, so he's playing... Don't know, honestly. So there is a Bridget. I could we play another Zoark Garb deck? Like Metal Tape could be Cartana. Might be a possibility. So I don't think Bridget would be used in Metal. We could be playing Magnazone. I think he's playing Magnazone. He's playing Metagross, okay. Hmm. This is where Espeon is pretty powerful. Espeon's definitely going to be clutch here. So I don't want to reveal it right away. He's going to attach to Lele. Alright, we drew an end. That's perfect. We'll put the energy on a Buzzwool if it lets me. We'll probably just get rid of Ace, Rolla, and I guess Frogadier. Frogadier, I'm sorry, you gotta go. I hate to see you go, buddy, but it is what it is. And we can Lele. Hopefully Bridget's in the deck. Alright, good. So we can Lele for Bridget. We can always get Frogadier back. We do have two more, I think. Uh, well, we should probably check with Prize. Let's do that, so. We got one Sycamore, one end Prize. We have Octillery, though. 
All right, that's fine. So we don't have baby Buzz, but as long as we have Espeon, guys, this matchup should go decently well for us. So we could probably just use this as like a spread game more than anything else. So we'll put down these three guys and we will jet punch. I could threaten to bell them to be knocked out or I can hit the full picks and then knock out the full picks, slow them down a little bit. I don't mind that. Because he's going to go into Vulpix here in Beacon. So I think I'm going to do that. So I'm not guaranteed to take out Vulpix, right? So, Though I could go Frogadier. I don't want to devote Frogadier to a Vulpix. I'd rather just knock it out casually. I'd rather devote the damage with my frogs to to the Metagross. Because if he max potions them, it will screw up everything. So he's going to max potion the Vulpix. kind of glad Lele didn't. Lele could be an easy prize. Glad he's not max potioning the Metagross. So I don't know how many he's playing. I don't even know what kind of Metagross death this is. We'll see if it's going to be Metagross Necrozma. Or just pure Metagross. Could be Metagross Sogaleo, judging from the deck box. Okay, it is Metagross Sogaleo. Sogaleo is going to be an interesting card to see. So we got a choice ban. We can end him here. Definitely don't want to reveal the Espeon. So, okay, Espeon, welcome back. We do find another Fighting Energy, which I think we will attach. Because we can definitely threaten a early KO here with the thing. I could Ultra Ball. I think I'll hold everything in this hand seems really important. So I think I'm just going to do 30 to a them. So that's fine. We can always take him out Frogadier next turn, which will be the goal. We'll, uh, Frogadier, the, we'll Frogadier this guy, which seems good. Though I also got a sort of play where I Greninja to Beldum and took it out. But again, I can come in with Espeon at any point. Espeon's going to be the ace in the hole this game. And while we can just build up our Buzzwool, we're golden. So he's going to Guzma my Diancy, it looks like. Okay, that's fine. He's going to bring out Beldum. Is he going to Algorithm this turn, or is he just going to Retreat? It looks like he's going to Retreat, okay. I could just Guzma here and take out... Oh, rip. If I can draw a Frogadier, I... Okay, never mind, I'm just putting my tank out. It's going to say if I draw Frogadier, I can take out two Bellums here. That's fine. He's going to do Beacon. We do have two Floats. We did lose an Ace Roller, though. Not like he has damage on him, but it's still relevant. Just keep... He's still going to grab that Cosmog. I think I'd keep any of him. Let's see what we can top deck. Octillery is really good. So this tells me it's safe to discard Greninja. I don't want to get rid of Cynthia though, but I don't want to lose B-String either. But I don't want to lose Espeon because I don't want to reveal that I have Espeon. This is really hard. I think it's safe to get rid of B-String. Again, our strategy will probably de-evolve them. Do we have our two floats? Alright, we do. So I'll, I'll safely grab Frog. The B string is a bit of a hard discard. We do have the other B string, I think. So we could do 20 to the Vol and Volpix and knock it out. We take our prize. There's another Froakie. We can put that down, or I can hold it. I think I'm gonna hold it. I actually think I'll Cynthia before I do Abyssal Hand. Dang it, we didn't get what I was looking for. Okay, we can Guzma next turn then, I guess. That's fine. I'll goose my next turn. Rip. Diancy's gonna stay in the active. He might even algorithm me here, and I don't have a, I don't have an end right away to get rid of that. So I'm gonna have to play my hand down. Okay, he's gonna field blower me. That's fine. The Cosmog's gonna be a, a target. And I think I'm actually gonna knock out that Cosmog. Honestly, like Sogaleo's scarier than Metagross. Metagross caps at 180 with the choice ban. I doubt he plays Kikui. So we definitely. Oh, okay, no, he's gonna rare candy Metagross. It's like, can you get rare candy and Sogaleo to turn you up a Cosmog down? But let's see what my opponent does. Again, our strategy to win is going to come in with Espeon and hope that he doesn't suspect it. He's going to end me. That kind of sucks. I did like that hand quite a bit because we were going to take out Cosmog there. That's annoying. But we do have Octillery still to work with. Greninja is perfect. So we don't even need to Guzma. We can just Jet Punch, knock that out. Or I can Absorption this guy. So Absorption right now is doing 200 damage. 220, so we can knock this Metagross out with Absorption, which I think I'll go for, but again, that Cosmog, I don't want Sogaleo to come into play, but he's going to Algorithm here, it looks like, so I'm going to have to end him. Oh, he's going to knock me out, right? Oh, he is going to knock me out. Shoot. He's going to knock on my Deonsi, I think. No, Algorithm, alright, we will end him with Lele. Hopefully we can get this Deonsi out of the active when we do that. We can put Brooklyn Hill down, I doubt he plays two Vulpixies. But uh, we can disrupt this. No Soul Burst is actually fine, and we really need to get that Cosmog off the board. I can choose to, I can potentially knock out Metagross with Buzzwool, or I can take down the Cosmog now. It's a tough choice. Like Cosmog, again, we can de-evolve it, right, and go that route, which is still pretty good. But, I don't know. 
I'm still scared of Metagross. I think maybe we do take out the Metagross, because we cripple the Metagross and he can't do the double uh, Geotech system. Alright, we drew a Guzma, which is nice. So play Brooklyn Hill. We'll drop the Tapu Lele. I think I have the other end in the deck. Alright, good. We'll Strong Energy the Buzzwool. We'll Abyssal Hand. We'll Greninja. So we're doing 20, 40. Absorption does KO this guy. So we will probably just put 30 on this Metagross. We'll Abyssal Hand for 2. See if I can get... No, we did not draw a float. We will end him here. We have to do that. We can't afford a Guzma. We have to end him. We still can't retreat. Oh my gosh, Diocese. Please get out of the active spot. Okay, this is kind of annoying that we can't retreat. This is pretty bad. We're kind of just stranded here in the active. With nothing to do. Diocese, why you do this to me? I have two floats. Can I please hit them? We did disrupt that algorithm. So we wasted his Jex tech. So no sword bursting, which is fine. He's going to feel blow the Brooklyn Hill. That kind of sucks because if he does... Take a prize this turn, which he's going to do. I really don't want to lose Diancie. Diancie is kind of nice in this matchup. Hopefully no rare candy Sogaleo comes down either. He does lose one of his can one of his candies. No rare candy Sogaleo, please. Or Cosmoam. Cosmoam is kind of bad too, because then you have to do more damage. There's an Ultra Ball. He's either going to go Beldum or Sogaleo. I think he hit the rare candy Sogaleo, guys, unfortunately. I think he has it. No, he has it. <laughs> no. Why do you have it? <laughs> Shoot, he hit the rare candy off of that. I was hoping he wouldn't because he's burned two candies. This thing is going to be a pain to deal with. We can't... Well, if we could draw Guzma... If we didn't lose Diancy, I think Absorption would not carry. We're still doing 200 with Absorption. So we can take out Metagross if we really wanted to. As long as it's attached to that Soul Leo, we might be able to take advantage of that. Diancy going down sucks because... We're not going to be able to retrieve it, and we do lose 20 extra damage, which is a little bad. But it's fine. I can deal with it. Another energy we really need. Nah, well, we just straight up KO him here, I think. I'm actually going to put an energy on Delele. I'm an Octillery for one card. I don't want to put Fro Froakie down. I want to maybe save that for another Buzzwool. Alright, Brooklyn Hill works. Sucks Baby Buzzle's prize. Baby Buzzle's beautiful here because we get two shots of Leo. And we get Absorption in the Metagross. Knocking it out. Oh, we're doing 250. Ah, right, whatever. We didn't have Guzma, so we couldn't talk to Leo. There's the Baby Buzzle, so that's a beautiful card to see. Unfortunately, we may not be able to use it, though, to our full advantage. It's still nice to just be able to do decent Sledgehammer damage. So our goal at this point, we can still do Knuckle Impact, but... We can take out Lele, but again, the goal to win this game is definitely going to be taking out those guys with Espeon. Our hand's a little awkward, though. I don't feel like Sycamore in a way too strong energy, so I could sit on this hand. So Knuckle Impact at the moment is doing 20, so we're doing 180, we're doing 210. We could do 230, but if we had Frogadier or Glaga Greninja, we could definitely do more damage. It sucks, but this is why Ninja Cat sucks. You can't, we, we, do, we don't have AZ. AZ would be great with Greninja. We don't have it right now. Expanded, maybe we can use it. I don't think Greninja... I, think, I don't think Greninja Lando is good in Expanded. So we're probably not going to do that. So let's see what my opponent will bring up here. He's taking a while, so I don't know if he's thinking. I mean, he has Ultra Road, so it doesn't matter what he brings up. Two Floats, though, is an interesting tech in Metagross, especially when you have the Retreat play, the energy from the Discard play, and the Ultra Road. So it's interesting to see this build. Let's see what my opponent does. He can attack me with Lele if he wants. Lele can swing me. That would actually be kind of scary. Then we'd have to still knuckle impact him. You can still knuckle impact Lele, which is fine. But we'll see what he goes for here. If he gets to swing with Lele, or he chooses to try and... I mean, you can bring up the Sogaleo, try and sponge a hit, build it up. I don't think that matters, though. He's going to need to get another Beldum down this turn, too, I think. He's only played two, so he can definitely get one. Is he not playing? Are you good, sir? Are you not playing? If you're not playing, that's good. I'm kind of happy about that. Oh, he's not playing. Oh, okay. So in the meantime, we're just gonna build up Buzzwool. I'm not even gonna 
bother anything else, anything else. I think I am gonna jet punch him though still. I still wanna soften these two guys up so we can swing. He's got 110. He's probably gonna max potion that though. Which kinda sucks, but I don't know if he's playing. Sucks that we can't if we had Dionysus, we could strong energy knock him out with another jet punch. If we can knock out Megos with jet punch, that'd be OP. But I think the spread option is still going to be the way to win at this point. If we take out two of his stage twos, at that point, he can't do much. So I think the spread play is still better than just straight up trying to two-shot him with Jet Punch Knuckle Impact. The spread play is probably the safest play at this point. Just got to see what my opponent's going to do. If he's not playing, I mean, this makes his game a little uneventful, unsuspenseful. Hopefully my opponent starts to play. Come on, play. Play, play, play. Alright, I mean, I'm not complaining. He's not playing. I don't mind this. This is a no-brainer, obviously. I, I could have jet punched, but it's a no-brainer not to get the KO there. So see what our two prizes are. There's a Cynthia. That's perfect. Kind of what I'm looking for is something to shuffle this hand away. But, uh, we should win the game. Bit of an uneventful match. We did get to show off Greninja and Frogadier a little bit. So Greninja was useful in this matchup. So I'm kind of happy. We actually used Greninja more than I thought we would have, which is good. Which is good. And if he's not playing, I mean, we basically win at this point, confirmed, because my opponent is not playing. We have two buzzwells ready to go. I don't know how my opponent can respond from that. Kind of sucks he wasn't playing here at the end. Please play. Does it? I don't know if it matters, but please can you play. I, I don't want this game to end, but I'm probably going to wrap up the video after this match. I think we got some good matches with the deck. I, this deck is fun to play. I don't know how competitively viable it is, though, in all honesty. But it is a fun deck to play regardless. I do enjoy this deck quite a bit. It's a fun deck. I don't think this deck has too much potential. I think there could be some tweaks made. I think you cut an Ace Rolla, he concedes. But uh, I think we'll wrap up the video here. I know that wasn't much of a match, but it's fine. We do get Chessa, which we can open up to wrap up the video. Um, and I know you guys don't want to watch Buzzle Bats every every or buzzle you don't want to buzzle like every single day i know you guys i know you guys don't like watching buzzle here i'm, I'm not going to be uploading a buzzle video every day it's probably be the last buzzle video for a while to be honest with you unless like a crazy rogue unexpected why am i going to the shop a crazy rogue buzzle unexpected deck comes out of nowhere and wins a tournament i'm probably going to cut down on no buzzle content so uh we will open up these four chests but I do like the deck. I think maybe an Ace Rolla could be taken out. I found that two Ace Rollas was kind of unneeded. I thought maybe we could, like, Greninja could take damage from, like, a Jet Punch. Or, like, maybe even Flying Flip of all attacks. This should be a good chest. Okay, I'll take an Orangaroo. That's fine. Even though I already have a ton, but it's fine. Um, more coins. Great. Cool. This is great. Um, but yeah, I think you could take an Ace Rolla out of the deck. Um, not bad. A Stretcher either. Okay, these chests weren't terrible, I guess. Not the best chest in the world, but I will take it. Um, as you can see, I have 20 Forbidden Light Packs. I've been grinding a lot of tourneys. But yeah, I think an Ace Rollo could be taken out of the deck. Oh, spoiler alert. I just spoiled potentially my next video. Oh, oh. There you go. But for those of you who stuck around to the end, you get to see potentially the next video. That's cool. Um, but yeah, Buzzwool. Great deck. Great deck. I like this deck. It's fun. I don't know what I'm saying. But yeah, you can cut an Ace Rolla, I think. Ace Rolla could be cut from the deck. Maybe one Ace Rolla is fine. I thought Greninja could be Ace Rolla'd. If we ever need the ability to. I do like the Espeon route though. It is pretty good. I do find this deck to be an interesting build. I think maybe a third B-string could be needed. So I think what you can do. Is you can cut an Ace Rolla. And go three B-strings. I think that's actually kind of better. Because um, you want to still do B-string with this deck I think. Um, you can't really rely on the Jet Punch Espeon combo. Especially against matchups like Buzzwool. And Naganadel And Dustmane. And Krasma where they don't really play many evolutions. But uh, yeah. That'll wrap today's video. If you enjoyed make sure you leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my road to 3,000 subscribers. I'm going to say you can hit 3k sub by july the support on the channel has been great let's keep it up let's continue it keep on motivating me to pump out content i'm still really enjoying playing forbidden light decks it's really fun still so we'll see and i'll see you guys on a pcg video have a good day and uh, yeah catch you guys later bye